starting off with uh, a couple of strong sales on some common books that we keep seeing, but I, I got to report the news. Uh, you know, this was 5,000, what, a month ago, month and a half? Tops. Yep. Um, pushing seven now. There was another sale, a best offer at 6,700 the other week. Um, nothing listed, but well, there's one on MCS. If you look on eBay, it's 7,000 change. But if you go to MCS, I think you can get it at about this price right now. Plus, uh, plus 3% plus sales tax. So. Yeah. Well, it's moving. So I just mind boggling. Uh, just it's going, um, this one, not nearly as expensive, but we haven't talked about this one before, at least that I remember, or at least in a really long time, you know, 100 episodes or so. I'd buy it at that price. Uh, I was watching it, and I kind of got distracted and forgot about it. This is the Niagara Falls, sometimes called variant, sometimes called reprint, whatever. It's from 2007. Uh, there was a Marvel Adventure Land theme park at Niagara Falls that later became Adventureland. They dropped the Marvel but at the time, they had four promo comics. This one, a 252, um, and two others. I'm sorry. I, I, they don't really matter as much. But uh, this one is a little bit more of a curiosity. It doesn't have the traditional cover. It's got more of a Venom cover. Um, but but it's always a cool one to grab. Um, I, it is interesting to me that it is so damn cheap. I would just think anything attached to ASM 300 would, would be a little more. I mean, the Chromium has kind of went up. This guy has been constantly... 100 to 250 bucks for the last in nine, eight? five, six years. Yeah. Wow. I thought it, it was, it, I thought it was easy 100 bucks for all. Uh, you know what? I looked and every year there's a low sale, a little under 100, and there's a high sale, a little over 200. One year did have a 300, uh, but it's really not done much in the last few years. So probably next sale will be a thousand dollars because that's how the world works. There's a 257 also, Niagara Falls. 252. Which, 252, excuse me. Yeah. yeah so 252 Niagara Falls with just him in the black suit, like sort of yellow border. Yeah. There's a, the one was a Marvel Age something, and that. there was another one. Uh, hold on. I got it on a screen here. Um, Ultimate Spider Man 6. I don't know what that was. And Marvel Age Spider Man 2. I, I don't know what the other ones are, but. Yeah. Uh, another really strong sale here. Malakan, 5,700. Paging Nico. Paging Nico. Sold both mine. It's time to maybe think about listing. I think I traded mine in for a sealed Optimus Prime. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about it. Traded mine for two Wolverine 310 variants. (laughs) But those are, those are, they were worth more at the time. And honestly, that 310 plat variant, and one's a 9.8 and one's a 9.4. I don't have this, the for anymore. This book's defying gravity right now, as is everything else. Mm-hmm. Makes makes my hope summers feel like a good price at one twentieth. You know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Just more checking in on Batman Beyond because there's been a little bit of uh, news with uh, Michael Keaton and and the uh, DC verse wow. and Flash wow. still floating in that two thousand range. I mean, it's a little above. It's I wouldn't say it made a jump. It's just kind of trending a tad up. Um, let's skip that one. I don't want to do that one. <laughs> Ghost Rider uh, 8.5, Marvel Spotlight 5. Uh, <laughs> over 5K now. There you go. I love it. Uh, yeah. Whew. No other high grades up. Somebody's got a... Uh, Stanley Sig 90 up at like 20k. I can't remember if it's CBCS or PGX or if it's CGC, it, it's, but something it's, like just absurd. Dude, it's it's PGX, uh, like steel color that they did to at least not copy CGC. And it's that one, whoever it is, has a lot of books. They have that key picture in there, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that one with like a they have a key literally like on that they took a picture with their phone, it's in all their listings, but like literally they have ridiculous books, so I can't hate. No, yeah. Um, this next picture is a sales track, but it's also a lesson for people. I, I even had some people in the foreign hangout um, debating on how to list something, and this is your answer. These two books, both caliber percents, one CGC 9.2, they were actually ended same day, a couple hours apart. One was a starting bid of 479 with some shipping on there, and one was a 99 cent auction. 
I was watching about an hour out, and the 99 cent auction had surpassed it. I honestly expected the other one to disappear. It didn't. It got relisted at the same damn price, and nobody bought it. There, I mean, if you're going to start at a random price, don't do an auction. Do buy it now. People that see these high prices don't usually want to wait out an auction unless keep you keep doing keep doing the random high price auctions, please. Well, if you're our audience, I'm going to try and help you out. <laughs> but I mean, again, the other guy that did 99 cent and went balls to the wall made out 50 bucks higher and it sold. So, but also a very high sale for a caliber presents 9.2. Honestly, is it? Yeah, I mean. I, uh, the nine eight is still trending below two grand. So for a nine two to be that Oof. high is is interesting to me. It just means crow fans were not as successful in life as Spider Man fans. True. I listen. <laughs> there is. I still say we're seven days out from a crow nine eight. Crow one still the book. Uh, is it? It's on Comic Link. Four K and change right now with seven days to go. I am just Oof. interesting to see what happens because there has not been a nine eight auction in eighteen to twenty months. Um, uh, lots of lots of heat on this one. Marvel Spotlight thirty two, Spider Woman, Jessica Drew, uh, Game of Thrones girl. Potentially, they keep saying that it's her. I don't know that, that makes any sense to me because anything that's Spider Man licensed and Disney is always dicey if that's even possible. So wait, so wait, wait who who are you talking about? Uh, the the Dragon Queen from Game of Amelia, Thrones, Amelia Clark. Yeah. I thought it was it was it was to be Spider Woman to be Jessica Drew. No, it doesn't confirm. It's just an unconfirmed rule. But there's a lot of like chatter that it's they think it's her, and I'm like that makes no I, sense to me. All right, I thought I saw something else. All right. I don't know, uh, but it did result in a big sale. Uh, also, a newsstand Spider Woman one, almost seven hundred bucks. That's a, bam. That's all I got to say. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh, let's see. People say I don't uh, don't talk about CBCS. Now, this is not a fair comparison, but this to me is something about the CBCS sellers. The CBCS was a buy it now. The other CGC was an auction. The CBCS sellers freaking short selling themselves and listing cheap. I I can't. I don't know why you do it. I don't. Well, th that's the thing is. They're so used to hearing that it sells a little less. They list a little less, and they're going to continue to sell a little less. Yeah. Have some balls. List high. List high like every other American. So, wait, so you're saying one of those? Those both the, look like CGC to me. Oh, shit. Was there, I don't know. I thought it was CBCS in there. No. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I must have had a little picture. Maybe I got the wrong picture. Yeah, but... Yeah. But... Uh, to be fair, CBCS, they just list low. Don't list it cheaper. List it the same. Put a best offer. Take it and don't show the world. You want the you want that to catch up? Don't make your price lower and obvious lower. Uh, who thought this was going to be a grand book? Oh, I definitely did. I love who thought book. this 10 years ago? Five years ago, whenever the fuck it was, when it was plentiful and in five below packs. Yeah, if I blow, another five below pack book, huh? I'm not. I'm not. At, I mean, is it crazy to say that if Silk gets um, announced, that the regular, you know, Silk or Amazing Spider-Man four hits a grand? I I don't even know what to think anymore, man. I could see this being a much, you know, two grand book if, if that happens. Three grand book, four grand book. I don't know. It, if it's, it's also, it's a Sony product and we just don't know. And, but here's the other thing. A lot of people, since Jump, people thought Silk was a better character than all those characters. I mean, Silk, everybody was talking about how Silk was such a better character than, at the time, Kamala Khan, uh, Gwen, Spider Gwen. I don't know if maybe if I heard much about it, but Miles. But out of all the young characters that they dropped in those couple years, it was Silk that everybody was on from get go. Um, and then nothing happened, and they just it felt like Marvel just kind of threw her to the wayside. Yeah, I I don't know what I think, man. It's a very high printed issue in general. I mean, it was a it was an issue four of a 
Spider-Man run of spec was kind of getting hot again. I, I don't know what I think. Just I continue to be boggled by some things, and this is one. I don't think it's a bad, it's a pretty cover. It's an interesting character, but it's still Sony and they can fuck shit up. You know, we've got this Morbius movie in the can that God knows what it'll be, if it's going to be fantastic or if it's going to be a flaming turd, you know? It's going to be great. (laughs) He said that with such enthusiasm. I'm completely sure. It's a good actor. It's a vampire. We haven't seen any cool vampires lately, so... Through this out to our buddy Drew posted this. I I don't even know. What, I don't even think I've ever seen this damn book. Second print, uh, Spider Gwen Zero six hundred for a nine eight. That's a second print. That's a second. That's a second print. So it's clearly worth more. Yes. So just threw that out there because if you don't follow Wanted Comics on IG, he's always sharing some interesting sales that he has. It, it's a tough book. It's a thick cardstock cover. Um, I will say. I mean, you can press it, but it's also uh, uh, little defects on this. Sometimes they, sometimes they overlook. Mm-hmm. And my, again, my theory is because they have their own fucking pressing department, <laughs> and they have they have to overlook some things. But hey, that's that's my little theory. Um, jump into the big boy again. Nine six. That looks a little cheap. I don't like that. It does look a little cheap for a nine six. That needs to be at least a. That needs to be at least a twelve. <laughs> at least. I think. I think that. I think that's only a hundred bucks off the all time though. I think ninety two is the record at nine six. So and maybe hey and yeah, but uh, yeah, I'd be I'd be fine with it being twelve. Miles, the first print still trending around three k. A little well, off the deal, deep, but Sorry. not as much. Those keep selling for thirty two hundred, and then people keep listening to them. At like, I know this is uh, this example is a, a auction, obviously. But then people start listening to twenty nine hundred. They just want to. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen money. it drop much below three. I mean, it's really in that twenty nine yeah. and change to yeah. thirty two. So, I mean, you're going to get peaks and valleys depending on who and where. I just, I, to me, it's the barometer book right now, man. Yeah. So um, that's a good thing to call it. Second print. Still under five hundred bucks on the Pacelli. That's uh, down. That's down a little though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah six. That, that, that hit seven hundred. Yeah. I months. just don't. I, it, it does appears that it's just not gonna catch on. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't have any freaking. How how is six hundred or, or you know four fifty to six hundred not catching on for that book? But yeah, the other one is you know a thousand, twelve hundred. Yeah, but they could have they could have ordered this one as many as they wanted, right? If they if they met some qualifier, they could have ordered the other one as many as they wanted. It's a second print, dude. All I know is I don't I don't know why people don't hold the line on the prices, like undercutting on you know on this one of the most popular characters with the one of the biggest possible bright sides of anybody that we can look at right now why why you possibly decide to just dump for for less than you know what i mean why would you sell it for 550 when already sold for 700 yeah uh, that is sold for 550 nice work well it's because it's cbcs I know, I know he was putting that I, listen i have absolutely zero skin in the miles game i'm too dumb and have not kept any so I, to me i'm just watching it from an outsider right now it's too too high for me to jump in it is purely just observation on, and interest. That's not too high to jump in. Right now, I'm, I'm buying other shit that I'm in on. So let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, me too. So, the book I bought hasn't got here yet, and it sucks. I can't buy anything. So, <laughs> listen, if I had unlimited funds, I'd be buying some. I don't. So I just keep checking tracking. You registered know I mean? mail, goddammit. Oh, registered mail's the turd. I hate registered mail. Uh, Young Avengers, first print, twelve hundred fifty. Ooh wee! I really just use that because this book interested me, and I, I, I don't think I often see it talked about. Vision, Scarlet Witch, uh, Volume Two, Number Twelve, first Wiccan and Speed, which I don't know is really true, but the first birth of the children. So. 350. I had not really seen a shit ton of chatter about this one. I definitely have not noticed a 9.8 sell, so just something to put on the radar. 
Uh, other books going through the fucking stratosphere. Man. This, I mean, you could have had this for 100 bucks at some point not too long ago. Yeah. No. Um, it, it's a fucking great cover, though. Sorry. It is a great cover. I just... I, I love a 9.8, but yeah, I've, I got somewhere else to get with that much money. This one just went up fast. Fast, fast, fast. Uh, also, you know, we talk about first Deadpool. Well, second Deadpool's getting getting rejuvenated and selling for some numbers that we all thought, whoa. I remember when the movie came out, it was, a you know, before the movie is a $50 book. I think at some point it peaked in the hundreds, you know, 150. And we're like, all right, nice. Now yeah. look back at that price and go, what? We just need to make a second appearance list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say, dude. Checking around the world, I'm our friend Lobo is gaining a little steam. I mean, I the chance that he ends up in a in a movie right now is just there's too much going on, I think. Yeah. And it was uh um uh that was also that's another call from the modern spec playbook. That was my, my that was my pick. Was that your was that your pick? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I listen. I thought about getting back in on this book, and uh, I don't know. It's it's cheap enough. It's not a terrible idea. It, it is trending up a bit because it was under it was under hundred. It's under three hundred. Not very long ago. It's one of the greatest books of the fucking nineteen eighties, and I don't give a shit what anybody says. That I mean, this, this is a, just a wonderful book of a great character that is due to get some um, non bad CW airtime or whatever show he was on that just made me sick and then yeah. at least he went back and killed that terrible version of himself that dc tried to like yeah metro retcon meta meta, meta lobo hot lobo yeah <laughs> yeah no no i listen i yeah this is the book i probably should just buy a handful and move on and exactly on yeah, just not think about it yeah lobo will definitely be a household name sooner or later if uh dc gets their shit together yeah, Listen, I think DC rides on the rock right now, man. Yeah, DC I agree. Needs, DC needs a rock win. And and you know what? And doing and having him do Black Adam instead of Lobo, that's a terrible idea. That guy he would he would crush Lobo. No no daughter pun intended. Uh, it'd just be he'd be the best Lobo. I mean, no, he would have uh, been. Yeah. When Jason Momoa was uh, was uh, announced, everybody yeah, he thought he'd account. be Lobo, right? Yeah. And then he then he turned out to be freaking Aquaman. And it's just like, really? No. So I, listen, yeah. I, disappointing. I, to me though, right now DC has two kind of things that are, you know, that Wonder Woman eighty four kind of didn't go fantastic. We got the Batman that nobody knows what they're expecting. The only thing on the sequel kind of train that's moving is Shazam and Black Adam. So they need Black Adam to be a freaking hit. Because if not, they got they got not much. They can't reboot again. Actually, they can't reboot again. But ain't, ain't nobody want to see that. I mean, the best movie they've done is The Joker, which wasn't even really a Joker movie. So I... Fuck. They're a mess. I don't want them to be a mess. I want them to get their shit together. I hope hope The Rock can do what The Rock does. Get people in seats. Ah, uh, Thundercats. Fuck, man. <laughs> it's crazy. It. I, I, I it. listen. I gotta. I listen. I, I know we all love our childhood, but you compare this to Transformers and GI Joe, it is not the same caliber to me. Homie, you can buy them. You can buy a Seal Toys for that much. No, thank you. I, I mean, this book was a turd a couple years ago like just you know gi joe won transformers won royce 50 60 other books this was five six ten i i mean there must be a loyal base but to me i mean transformers gi joe are tier one this is a tier two thing i, I can't see them on the same price comparison I, even brian's got to admit that right 100 percent, yeah and, but, but here's the problem though we never thought we would see 90% of the stuff we're seeing. So it doesn't surprise me that, mis that this nostalgia factor is taking over on all these type of books, all these eighties and early nineties properties. I mean, no, I, it doesn't surprise me, but to me, like, okay, if transformers is two K and GI Joe's two K 
Thundercats is 1K. I don't know about um, Voltron as far as as far as like nine eights go, but I know Raw Voltron number ones are going for an easy hundred. Yeah, they, really? they have picked up a yeah. ton. I yep. saw one at the show; it was seventy five bucks. Wow. I think well, DC, DC Comics presents forty seven. So if we're going first, first team, first team man and Skeletor is. I mean, it's 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 over two grand now. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the thing. He man's a he man's a tier one. Well, yeah, that's new, not new. tier one. No, no, I yeah, I agree with you. Like I, I mean, on, like seriously, I mean, there's, I don't think anybody would would disagree that for twenty two hundred bucks, you got to pick a DCP forty seven or a Thundercats. You, 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 I mean. Just investing, not not necessarily fanhood. Even though there's got there's definitely more uh, O2 fans. I mean, you just, you'd have to go with the with the first He-Man and a DC title. Okay, take you know. take He-Man out. Where are you going? On the other three. So Thundercats, GI Joe. Okay, so uh, GI Joe, Thundercats. What was the other one? Transformers. Ones? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, GI Joe and Th- uh, GI Joe and Transformers are, are probably preference, um, but GI Joe. I mean that was. I mean our dads played with GI Joes, right? So uh, yeah, I, but I would. That show was still our our show, you know. And and they, yeah. you're right; they have an even longer fan base. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That what I'm saying has been around longer. So I, I mean, I would go, I would go per, personally. DBCP forty seven. Not that's that's me. We you, but I think you can argue GI Joe or Masters of the Universe easily, and and uh, then Transformers and then the, then T Cats for sure. Well, e- even let's go with the argument of how much like time is is the product in the lexicon i mean transformers had a reboot every couple years uh gi joe's had a couple reboots um and even uh masters has had a few yeah what about about turtles i mean does turtles not enter this category because of what they because it's a hundred because it's a hundred grand so i guess it's a different different ad we can't compare that because i'm I'm talking about putting it in the level of like you know those nostalgia factor shows, right? Yeah. Well, Turtles have never left us, though. No. Yeah, I, I don't like, think you... Transformer. I would say would be second for like longevity as far as like recreations and stuff in movies and going on till today. And then it's got to be GI Joe and uh, Masters Universe. Definitely uh, never lost their fan. They had their own convention every year, and I mean, I I know about it more since it wasn't uh, far from where I live. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I, the, the Thundercats just they, they just don't have it. But but like honestly, if we did a comparison on the census, there's got to be the least amount of Thundercats. Nine point. You're probably right, and maybe that's a supply demand issue. I I just it's unsettling to me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unsettling. Yeah. Um, just thought I would check in on this one. It happened to hit the radar. Um, actual price as a Canadian sale was about eleven hundred and change. So it's a little little down off the radar. Not not the most you know thought about thing right now. <laughs> I don't know where that, it's going to go. That means it's buying time. Yeah, I, I don't know what the peak is. I I just happen to observe it felt low. Will it go lower? I don't know. This one was on the list. I don't know a few weeks ago when it came out. Still strong on the raw market, almost three fifty and a nine eight for a thousand and change. I'm not surprised by this, considering how hard this book was to get. Yeah, I have no idea on how hard it was to get, or what, or why. Um, Wasn't it part of the Kickstarter? Yeah, it was a Kickstarter book. Um, There was like four other books or, or that that or covers that they had. I think there was a Sienkiewicz cover. Um, this wasn't an easy book to get, and it really flew under the radar. No, but if you if you kind of talk about it, this in a nine eight is now with the Hughes high books. I mean, he only he while being an exceptionally popular artist with our our crew five six years ago, he's not really continued to appreciate for some reason. You know, his cheesecake art is just it's not going away, but it's not. It's not hitting the new base for some reason. I don't know why they're not looking for that. Maybe they're looking for appearance. They're looking for different things. Um, but it, it's a great cover, but it is now up there with Lost 23, Teen Titans 75, what, whatever other ones you want to list. 
it's a comparable price point now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, not, not comparable print run. Uh, it could be minuscule. I, I if the like flood it. hits, I mean, CGC is obviously slow to get back to people these days, pretty much unless you're paying for a walkthrough, which you're probably not on this book. Well, you're this right, guy, right. whoever that is. Maybe I'm not. I'm not exactly sure when it came out. Or uh, he could he could have snuck in, and just got lucky and been fast track and early in. Who knows? Because I've seen people saying that their first one is not always their first out, and a little bit of random luck. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, Lowe Low still hasn't gotten his due. I don't go fuck on anybody says. I, I saw that nine eight for a thousand bucks and I thought about it, but I've just been having I had I got too much on the radar, man. Thank you for not sharing it. Yeah, right. Somebody <laughs> would have bought it. Oh yeah, that's all right. I'm sending you one that Ozzy may have a chance on if he can Sweet. do that. We'll see. Um, I did a lot of Golden Age this week, man, because I truthfully Nico and I've been talking and there's just not been a ton of auctions because a Golden Age I like to track the auctions. Buy it now is a lot to track down and the best offers and stuff. And I, I like prefer looking at the auction data, especially in the golden age. Um, but there was a ton. If you were an EC guy, there was a lot of uh, EC, very good type run stuff and, and stuff floating around. There was a lot more auctions that I've seen in a long time. I actually had more books and I cut it down. I have, I mean, I don't, I only have two, three three of kind of the pre-code grails in my eyes that uh, I've kept. This is one that is kind of on that list that if I were to buy one more, it might be this one. I just really dig the, you know, the head and the bell. I love this one. So if you guys are kind of getting into expanding your taste, look at some of these things and just your brain will go, what, what am I watching? Exactly. Uh, Men on drugs that Uh, drew things 70 (laughs) years ago this is not this is not a popular book per se um but it it was interesting to me it's one i've not seen a ton of uh bondage cover uh first doll girl but a really cool kind of just skull skeleton type zombie cover just dug it felt i'd share uh nice frazetta cover ghost rider three he did several of these Ghost Rider covers, kind of undervalued compared to some of his other stuff in my mind. Nice 5 0 copy. Oof. Yeah, that's dope. Uh, Ginger. Ginger number four is kind of the reverse of the classic uh, Archie cover that's the headlights. This is kind of the uh, tail lights cover, people will call it. So, <laughs> a 1.8 raw grade. For 300 bucks now this is a nice presenting one uh, but it is kind of one of those second tier good girl arts that's starting to kind of move up towards the first tier uh threw this out here for my buddy leg probably wishes he you don't have this one do you no i don't yeah this was not a bad price no i don't those don't, those really don't come up no and if i would have seen it beforehand i would have sent it to you as one of those oh yeah. shit yeah Ah, um, Tales of Terror annual. These freaking EC annuals are tough. Um, I know we talked about it a lot on Vintage Boy- Voyage. This is a poor spine completely split. 750 bucks, guys. They are just tough, tough, tough to find. Um, I can't believe there's 22 of them. I don't, I don't, uh, there's something. It's the second annual, I think. But um, I don't know why it's 22. Maybe it's issue 22 is an annual. I'm sorry. I'm not an EC master. Um, Maybe DS is in the audience can correct me. Uh, This is a book that I just, I don't know. I I don't look for it specifically, but I never see it. I don't, Uh, I don't, I'm surprised this thing even exists out there. Right. Military comics one first black Hawk. This is a coverless copy I can't say I've ever actually looked at the splash page because I've never seen one. It's kind of a, a nice splash page when I it's a, what caught my eye, honestly. But uh yeah, freaking military comics one, first Blackhawks, which for you know the older generation was like the character. 
big, huge guy uh, following. If you're a military collector, it's one of the grails. Uh, this is a coverless copy. Honestly, I, it's not a terrible price in my mind. I don't know. Does it seem to be a terrible you, price? No. Three hundred fifty bucks, and you just don't see him. Uh, you know, Tony L has talked a few times. There's some golden age books that maybe the splash isn't always better than the cover, but there's several that 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 it's an equally good one. Um, you know, uh, coverless Hulk one is not a terrible coverless book. You know, so. Oh, not at all. Uh, another one for Sean, Mad One, good condition, just under a thousand bucks. That looks. I guess I can't see it, but with that color, it's man. a really nice presenting one. I I'm gonna assume I think this is pretty uh, reasonable dealer. There's probably some internal issues, maybe a back cover issue. I didn't get in the weeds, but yeah, I mean yeah, nobody's I gonna grade it good and not have oh, a reason. Detach the both staples. Just, uh, centerfold, centerfold still? Yeah, oh, you can. I, I'd be all over that thing. Listen, you can you can get a detached centerfold completely up to a seven on the right book. Yeah, oh. I wouldn't. I would not be tripping about that. I, I went. I went down this rabbit hole of CGC after watching some Etta Nick videos, and he talked about it. And I, I tested it. I got. I got up to a seven on a detached. Well, maybe not fully attached. One stable detached gets seven. Two has a limit somewhere up there. So, huh, this one snuck by. Terrible listing. Five fifty for a three point five Batman fifteen famous machine gun cover. Ugh. I would have snagged that in an instant. <laughs> that is a Batman that fifteen book. for five hundred fifty bucks. That bright of a cover, uh, a best offer too. So somebody might have snuck it even cheaper. I didn't dig into it because I didn't want to be heartbroken. Too bad they had to use a magazine case on it. That is interesting to me. Just a little, a little too big, man. I'm betting there's a spine roll on the bitch because it, normally it'll fit. Yeah, uh, it might just be a, a bad copy of Spinal. So somebody might get a freaking pressing upgrade, or the off like the um, yeah the Spinal or the way it's maybe rolled forward made it wider. Yeah, than it would be. As you could normally the, they normally they fit in a case. So I, there's something peculiar with that one. Is that my last one, McClay? Am I moving into your stuff now? Uh, I think so. I see nothing right. else on this checklist. Tag, you're it. All right, so I threw this one up there because it was uh, another comic one. I thought this was interesting. This is uh, Invincible issues one, two, five through one hundred and forty-four for two grand, thirty-six bids. I probably, if I would have seen the number one, I think that's a killer deal, right? Maybe depending on the condition. I mean, as long as it's not a beater. It's also got Noble Causes number or the Noble Causes issue, which is the B cover, which is the homage to X-Men, which is impossible to find and then even harder to find in high and decent grade. Um, so I thought this was very interesting. And uh, for 2000, I think somebody could have got a really good deal depending on the grade of that one. Um, all right. So this week I kind of did a, a dive into some art that was sold on eBay. This is an uh, Umberto Ramos Ryan. Oh, I didn't know we were doing art, my friend. Shit. Right? $27,000 on 78 bids. Would you guys spend that much on a Ryan Stegman Umberto Ramos piece? Oh. I don't have, I don't, uh, yeah, no. I'd and buy. I know, uh, hey, hey, this is, there's fans out there for everything. I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge, big enough fan to pay that much for, for that piece, but who knows? I wasn't uh, that, er I wasn't that early on Dogecoin. Yeah, right. I, I think, man, original art's so tricky because I mean, people just have their things. Like, there's classic covers, classic issues, but then there's people who just love artists. Yep. Uh, here's I mean, you love feature. the Watcher, man. Who you, we all got our thing. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's that's why I asked because you know that's whoo. How about this? This is what I'm talking about. Original art, Captain Ooh. America 206, page six by Jack Kirby for sold for under three k. Right, so you got a Ryan Stegman Umberto Ramos piece for twenty seven thousand, or a Jack Kur and a Jack Kirby page for three. Feels like that should have been flipped, but I get it. Um, Somebody so, has a better marketing department. Well, yeah. it's also it's also. I mean, when you're buying original art, it's what are you getting? Yeah, that's not a splash page. It's not. There's so many variables in original art. Yeah. Well, how about this one? Uh, Transformers. Issue two, original comic art, page four with Megatron 
sold for sixteen hundred dollars. That I like. That I'm cool, feeling right? that. I'm right? feeling that. That's shout a good out page. to yeah, shout out to Ultra Maximus and all the Transformer fans out there. This one's pretty cool because you can see it shows all the. Uh, oh, other... sick, I actually dig. I don't look at the OA because it just makes me get in trouble. But yeah, I like, what am I doing? Yeah. So I thought that was interesting, right? Um, another here you go, John. You're gonna love this one. Frank Frazetta, Shock Illustrated, came the Dawn EC 1954 original pencil art signed. Sold for sixty seven hundred dollars. Yeah, Frazetta. Damn. That right there is freaking awesome. I yeah, I don't know what to say. I Frazetta's tough. I there's more counterfeit out there than I like to. Oh, do the stuff his daughters post on Instagram. Yeah. The Frazetta girls. I mean, oh. I love the stuff, but I, I just every time oh, I read, yeah. there's a lot more counterfeit Frazetta out there than I want to take a gamble on. Yeah. Well, this is a you know getting into the art. This is a little less comic book and more um, you know collectible. This is Nico territory, right? Uh, Banksy. So if you guys uh, know about Banksy, you know he put out these bills into circulation that were uh, 10 pound notes that he put Princess Die on. And they, Di. Yeah, and they feel real. And he actually put them into circulation, right? <laughs> and, that is and, awesome. Dude. Yeah, and there was only so many of them that he put into circulation and people kept some of them. And I always wanted one of these, man, but they, they were just expensive as hell. So people you know, that, that kept them are selling them. And here's one that sold for uh, $2,700. It's an interesting piece of pop art. Now, did yeah. anybody go to jail for counterfeiting? Uh, well, they don't know who Banksy is, so they haven't caught him yet, I guess. Well, if it's not somebody, somebody went to the store. Dude, if he did this all himself and then he got caught doing it and then was revealed as Banksy, it will be better. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I, don't well, I, mean, him, it, I don't need him revealed, though. I'm cool. But I don't – I. it's not counterfeit if it's not exact, is it? I don't know. I don't know in England. I couldn't tell you, but – it's pretty damn cool. I'll, I'll say that for sure. Uh, you know, we were talking about NFTs earlier, and uh, one of my favorite artists, Jeremy Geddes, does uh, this, these amazing, amazing um, astronaut pieces that I really like. Well, this is an artist that I just found, you know, going through art on eBay uh, that I just love this piece. But this was sold as an, a print um, or an NFT. I can't figure out, but I, I would love to own this print. Look how gorgeous that is. Um, I can't tell. It says it's a medium print, but uh, they put and it, here's here's you know what we were talking about putting NFT in the title. I don't. It seems kind of shady, like the same thing where if you put not CGC in the title, but uh, this is an actual physical piece that sold for nine hundred twenty. Or that or that eBay rating. Yeah, yeah. Of zero. Uh, yeah, there you go. Or an eBay one of one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, that's not good. That's not good. All right. So some more, you know, that's that's some of the crazy art stuff. But uh, let's get back into some of the other things. I thought this was interesting. 1989 Tops Nintendo Mike Tyson punch out card. The the, the <laughs> little Mac sticker like that is Love great. It. Right. Sixty one bucks. Yeah. Hey. But uh, I'd probably cool. buy that for just the nostalgia. Exactly. Exactly. Like that game. Uh, whew. Um, this was interesting. We showed, uh, the, the Superman card with a raw one that sold for so much, uh, a couple weeks ago. This is a PSA 10, uh, uh card from the same <laughs> set sold for $1,500 in a PSA seven, sorry, a PSA card, not a PSA 10. Um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, some Fortnite stuff. This is, uh, mind boggling because, Whoever would have thought that these cards would be worth something? Well, they're worth a lot, a whole lot. This is uh, Garbage Pill Kids. I always show you guys Garbage Pill Kids. This is um, one card that I wish I owned. This is the 2020 Tops Garbage Pill Kids Sapphire Atom Bomb card, uh, Pop One, twenty-seven thousand five or two thousand seven hundred and fifty bucks. And then the eighty-five Tops Nasty Nick sold for what the fifty thousand. Nice. Nice. I found a bunch of uh, Series 1 Garbage Pail Kids in my garage last week. Nice. Not a Not bunch. At all. Like maybe 20-something. But uh, I, and I recognize them as my as my favorites. They're not they're not 
uh, gradable. They're not near mint. <laughs> no, they're not. They were my favorites. And I found I mean, them finally. I am all these sure. Years. I'm pretty happy about it. If my brother and I ever stumbled upon those, they would be beat to shit. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Ronnie for the, uh, for the super chat. He says, Pop Kills was a buy in 48 bucks last year. I received a few different covers at CGC now. Thanks for the deep dives. Did you guys see the Department of Truth Rose Besh cover? And I did. Very cool. I did. I like it. She's selling everything right now. I, uh, it, it, I think it was a good buy-in. Some people, whatever, on store variants, but I think it was a great cover. So, All right. Uh, more market report stuff. This is some Pokemon craziness. This is a, a Pokemon Neo Revolution factory sealed booster box. Sold for $26,600 with 49 bids, $500 shipping. I think they could have got free shipping on that. Um, another, so this is something that really pisses me off. I've talked about weighing packs in the past, uh, more along the lines of sports cards packs, but in the Pokemon world, weighing packs is something that is major, major. They do it on it on a lot of stuff. This is a heavy pack, right? Up from um, the original base set, and heavy means it's probably got a special, you know, foil card in it or something. Sold for six hundred and sixty bucks. And then a Charizard Art Heavy Pokemon Shadowless Base Set Booster Pack. So another heavy pack from that sold for uh, just under, you know, thousand bucks. Hmm. So I just, I, the weighing of pack things is so bad for, for this hobby. Um, you know, we talked about the Magic the Gathering searching last week, but it is what it is. So just be careful out there buying uh, unopened uh, wax and make sure, or, or packs. I mean, you get, if you're going to spend that kind of money on stuff, you just got to you got to gain the knowledge. I mean, we all we all spent time on the comics. I know Brian spends time on the toys and more cards, but don't wander in something you don't understand is, I think, the lesson here. Amen. Amen. Uh, here you go. We always make jokes about the Beanie Babies, but here is a 1997 Princess Diana Beanie Baby that sold for 25k but only one bid and they put worth 125k so i don't know if it was real but i just thought it was funny uh we always make fun of when bd when a beanie baby is going to start selling again so uh here you go looney tunes daffy duck lego minifigure uh we sold the we saw the miles morales one a couple weeks ago this one uh daffy duck sold for 810 dollars for 38 bits why I have no idea. People in the chat and people watching the show on the replay, let us know in the comments why this Daffy Duck Looney Tunes figure sells for so much because it Please. is one of, the, one of the packs you can get in the store that give a random minifigure from you know all those characters. So I don't know why Daffy Duck sold for so much. Absolutely crazy. Uh, here's something that's pretty crazy. This is a uh, Sonic the Hedgehog plush doll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Plush doll. From 2012, it's the Knuckles uh, plush doll, sold for $4,300 with 65 bids. You guys think that was crazy? Um, what is actually more crazy than that one, if you guys are South Park fans, look at this. This is a South Park Get plush the fuck doll. Out of you. No. Yeah. South Park plush doll. This is a tweak shaking plush rare tested and working sold for $11,000 or $11,000 15 bits. Okay. <laughs> Make some money. You guys make some money. Like where were those available. even sold? Were those, were those like, you know, comedy central uh, used to have, a lot of shit that you could flip on eBay just on their website that people didn't know. Like a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff, hats and koozies and shit like this. Probably it's probably where it came from. Yeah. It could be some special they gave out at some event. Um, pretty crazy. All right. On to the next one. This was kind of interesting. Uh, I talked about these toy biz figures, uh, especially the Spider-Man toys biz figures and the Fantastic Four toy biz figures. These were the figures that came out before they called them legends. I think they're called them classics. Um, just the, the, the loose, one of the loose uh, figures sells for, sells for $100, $112. Um, but this blew me away. The Marvel Legends Black Panther unopened is selling for $102 right now, which absolutely crazy um 
they sell for this they sell for crazy amounts of loose too so if you guys ever see these loose figures around you know it might be worth checking them out how about this one uh hot wheels the simpsons homer and family car six thousand dollars 13 bids again this could be something special uh i don't know hot wheels collectors are worse than pokemon people at the stores i mean i remember when i used to collect uh when i used to go get uh, star wars figures and i would go to stores you know when they opened to go check out the star wars figures because i worked uh, um an overnight job and i just on my way home i'd stop there and the hot wheels figures would get in fights like fist fights man fist fights crazy but hey if they're selling them for six thousand dollars i see why uh that's, that's absolutely bonkers uh here is some in other interesting toys this kenner batman figure from the animated series uh i don't know why it sells for this much but 300 dollars for the combat belt batman animated figure um muscle men we talk about them this one this is a set uh or a, a, a lot of muscle men uh, sold for $200, but this is why. So this figure right here, it looks like he's holding a football, is one of the most famous uh, hard-to-find muscle men figures called Satan's Cross, they call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's the way they call it. But uh, the reason why it's so hard to find is, and you make sure, you this is how you tell if it's one of those figures, you look at the back and if it has that hole in the back, because in Japan, when this they put this figure out, it had another like horse it was like a back half of a horse or something that attached to this um so that's how you know it's the uh the actual satan's cross figure that they call it so yeah i don't have i don't i don't have satan's cross but i got a bag of about 200 of them in the garage yeah man they're great and they sell for for decent money i turn them into magnets I yeah, I know. You made, you made me some. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. They're dope. Dope magnets. Magnets, right? And um, the, the Masters of the Universe does the crossovers with them for the slime trash cans and for yes. the uh, uh, Super 7 exclusives. Yeah. Um, Spawn toys. So this is the 10th anniversary Spawn figure. Sold for These are selling 137, 142. Uh, kind of interesting. Um, but look at this. This is dropped. Uh, Spawn Kickstarter three pack is now selling for four hundred dollars. What was uh, the buy-in? Uh, I think it was one hundred ninety bucks. So still, still good. But what it was like uh, eight hundred dollars at one point. I think they're selling. Probably for. The Look, if you if everybody's down. getting their shit in, if you're selling while well, the market is flooded, I'm keeping my Spawn tape on mine. I'm sad I didn't buy two because I want to open it. <laughs> Uh, and, and then he added so many things like the signatures and stuff for the people that bought all three, like as it went on and on, like Kickstarter tends to do. So, um, yeah, I'm torn, I'm torn between opening it to check it out or just holding it to check it out. But you see all the spawn tape on it and stuff like that. I mean, I really think that's pretty At cool. At this price, I'm almost thinking about buying one and I missed it. You might as well only double the price. And now you know all the shit you're going to get. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's pretty It's pretty cool. I'm not even considering selling mine. And if you sell it now, and especially at auction, I just think it's the dumbest time because every, everybody has theirs. This is the biggest flood there's going to be. Yeah. Hold off. So I, I thought this was uh, kind of interesting to get into some of the card stuff. Uh, this Panini 1973 OK VIP sticker. Uh, why is this listed for so much? Or why did it sell for so much? I'm sorry. It says he sold for sold seven of them. Yeah, so he's I, made seven million dollars on that what's card. Wrong with this? I don't. It's an Enzo Ferrari sticker. Is this like the first Enzo Ferrari sticker? I don't know. Panini VIP Enzo Ferrari sticker. Uh, I just thought it was interesting because he's got it up there for, uh, you know, a shitload of money. But uh, let's well, get him. Ferrari that. fan, maybe you can just afford, afford it. Yeah. To so buy a Ferrari, why would I buy a sticker? <laughs> <laughs> you get like fucking four used Ferraris for that. So the card market, sports card market, is absolutely continue to go bonkers. I just thought this was interesting. This uh, uh, Somebody had a great, amazing set or a recent sub of Hall of Fame football player rookies that sold for ridiculous amounts. So you can see an 81 Tops Joe Montana rookie, PSA 9, sold for just under three grand. An 81 Tops Art Monk rookie, PSA 10, sold for 1600 An 83 Tops Marcus Allen, PSA 10 rookie, sold for 2200 Mike Singletary rookie sold for sixteen seventy five and a 
third year, Joe Montana Gem Mint 10 sold for $1,400. These are all auctions, guys. Uh, 84 Tops Dan Marino Rookie Gem Mint 10 sold for $5,000. An 84 Tops Elway Gem Mint 10 sold for $9,000. Two Dickerson Rookies uh, PSA 10 sold for $1,600 and $1,900. And then an 84 Tops Howie Long PSA 10 sold for $1,200. Here's the crazy stuff. Stein and me, and we talked about Jerry Rice and the 86 Tops rookie and how hard it is to get in high grade. There is proof. A PSA 10 Jerry Rice rookie oh, sold for $91,000. No way. 20 times a nine? Yeah. And that uh, nine 18. stuff is crazy, man. Like it, it, PSA nines get four thousand dollars, you know, thirty five hundred dollars, and uh, that's how rare it is to see a PSA ten in that Jerry Rice. God damn! Uh, I thought it was interesting uh, that eighty seven tops Randall Cunningham is one of the, my favorite, most underrated cards in all of cards. It's starting to get some love. A PSA ten uh, eight sixty five. Here deal. we go. Uh, the um, Bumblebee yeah, Miami. Rock card forty two thousand. Here are two similar cards for Emmett Smith. The eighty nine Florida Gators Smoky card when he was playing with Florida sold for in PSA ten sold for sixty three hundred. And my favorite, the eighty eight Burger King Florida Gators card in PSA ten sold for two thousand. So um, I know that Emmett Smith isn't the Rock, but these you know some of these. Coll collegiate cards are really hard to find. Some Ryan, of them why didn't you make me buy a rock card back then? <laughs> Dude, can I, can I, real, real quick though, be, being a perforated card, I guess this is the same. I haven't looked into it completely. I guess this would be similar to Sports Illustrator for kids. How is this like a cheat code? Do perforated cards just get tens because they're not bent? In the no, they're the much card? harder. They're much harder to get tens, man. How do you get? Look, but look, I mean, look at look at the edges. Yeah. On there. They yeah. use like protractor blades to cut each individual piece. I mean, it's crazy. So unless you're getting uh, an uncut sheet and you're using a protractor to cut each individual little piece, you know what I mean? Yeah. The preparation. Most of these cards don't even get graded. Yeah, that's okay. All right. That's, it's I just, crazy. It's, though. It's, in, my, in my oh. head, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't seem like it could be a tech. Because of the um, I do know that the 1988 Burger King Emmett Smith card was reprinted pretty heavily, but uh, it's pretty easy to tell. I think it's missing either the Burger King logo or something else on the back. So if you guys are in the market for that Emmett Smith card, do a little research on it. But uh, great, great card. So, um, all right, here is some interesting stuff. All right, so I talked a couple shows back uh about these prism stickers i think i picked up a bunch of batman uh oh and Lo rob liefeld and todd mcfarlane you know prism stickers from the same type and, and i said it reminded me of these now these 85 prism jewel stickers were given in those machines where you put your money in and come in between two cards and you know the sticker was in between the Michael Jordan version of this is probably one of the toughest Michael Jordan card collectible things you'll ever find. It sells for ridiculous amounts of money, and it is from 1985. Um, the only cards earlier than that are the 84 Star. So not you know it, it came out before the 86, 87 Fleer uh, set. But you can see this isn't even Jordans, and how rare they are, uh, and how much they go for. Um, so that was pretty interesting. All right. And I'm going to end it for the craziness on the market report with this. Why are AMD Radian RX 6800 XT, is it just the pick or these, selling for $30,000? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Okay. <laughs> It's it's two. These are two. Um, for those of you guys don't know yet. These are two graphics cards. So graphics cards have gone up in price ridiculously because of Bitcoin mining and, and stuff like that. But also they're very hard to get because of the pandemic. But not thirty thousand dollars. So if another anybody, single feedback with only. How do you how do you have one feedback and only two thirds positive? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that the, that uh, yeah, this has got to be. So, there's got to be something bullshit, weird dude. going on with this. I mean, I get everybody saying crypto and all this stuff, but, but I mean, is that one card the only one you can get? 
Well, it could be one of the ones that mines Bitcoin the most efficient, um, like Ultra is saying, but yeah. So DS, uh, shout out to DS Comics. DS says uh, that's for Bitcoin mining and there's a massive shortage of those. Pop Archival says the same thing. So there you go, guys. Uh, you know, if uh, the, the comic book speculation market's getting you down and pissing you off, you can go jump into uh, graphics card speculation and make a little cash. That is the market.